explain social insurance at all? No. The idea behind social insurance is this. It, it is an insurance program. So literally you have to pay into it to get it. And the only way to pay into it is to work. And the idea is, since most people barely make enough to live and have any extra at all, that you should not have very many say very much in savings. It's hard for them to accumulate any. So the idea is if every worker pays into it, then there'll be enough to provide pensions for every worker when they retire. <coughs> If individuals do it, there'll be a significant number of people who will not have enough money for a pension. And that's part of the reason why the poverty rate amongst the elderly was at 90% in the Great Depression. And so social insurance. And so that's how insurance functions. When you work, you pay for me to be retired. That's why you must get two to three jobs, go on a little life of luxury and ease, right? I earned it, right? Right? And then when you retire, the current workers will pay for your retirement. And it's paid through a tax. It's not a big pension. The township plan was going to be a huge pension. This was only going to be enough to get you just around just over the poverty line. Then hopefully you'd have savings and maybe a pension from your job, which is pretty rare now. But the idea of those three things would give you enough to have a good retirement. And so I have a job where I have a pension from working, so that's part of my pay. Is retirement pension and I have social security. That is that is a good hunk of my my plan retirement down the road. And still for a few minutes at least. And yes. Well, we'll get to the life expectancy because that's actually a good question. Because like, well, for someone at that age, about forty-seven. But I'll explain it. And the retirement age is sixty-five. So let's get to the law, then we'll come back to it. No, no, no. Is that really? Think about it for a second. Is that how they figure life expectancy? So let's get to this real quick. It originally going to be 15 bucks a month on average. The actual first check was 2253 but I think it's kind of funny. I just thought that was interesting. It wasn't enough, remember, to give you this huge income or match your total income. In retirement, it's supposed to be enough to get your retirement, and you have to work. They have a mathematical formula to figure it out, and they take your average of thirty of your last thirty years of employment, and so you're thirty-five. They take the last thirty or whatever it might be. They come up with an average, and then that they figure out. They'll use that to figure out your uh, your pension. And it's not. And do get this now. Everybody gets. It. If you work, you get Social Security. If you work, or you have a spouse or a parent who works, you get Social Security. <laughs> yes, unless you're an adult. And, and the thing about it is, is that everybody gets it, but it, somebody who makes today $50,000 a year, so around the median salary, you, make, you don't make that much less than somebody your pension is, is not that much less than somebody who makes 50 million. So it doesn't go up significantly with that. It's, but it's a little bit higher the more money you make, but not that much, the way they do the formula. But everybody gets it. And that was Roosevelt's plan. When it was first being proposed, it's kind of a counter to the Townshend plans. Townsend. Townshend is Revolutionary War stuff. Townsend plans. They wanted it just to be means tested. And so only for poor and working class people they would get it, but wealthier people wouldn't. And Roosevelt realized two things. First off, you have to create a whole bureaucracy to figure out who gets it and who doesn't. That's expensive and it creates resentments. And if everyone gets it, no politician would ever have the guts to get rid of it down the road. Because he knew. Believers in conservative economics will want to get rid of Social Security as soon as they can get rid of it, which is the way it is today. As soon as if they could do it, they would get rid of it. But the vast majority of people not only love it, they now rely on it. And so that was his plan. And that's, regardless if that's good policy or not, that's really smart politics. That's smart. And Democrats up until the 1970s would run on it. We gave you Social Security, the Republicans were opposed, vote for us. 
once again, smart politics. They would advertise. They put these in post office everywhere. So it's scary, so it's scary, so it's scary. And this is how they pay for it. It's payroll tax. It's taken out of everybody's check. So this is actually done, at first you had to do it yourself, but in World War II they started withholding. You know what I mean by withholding? <laughs> if you work and they withhold the taxes, that they started in World War II and now they still do it through today. And originally it was 1%, today it's 6.2%, and then the employer matches it. So I pay 6.2% of every of my pay, my gross pay, no deductions taken out, and then the school district pays 6.2%. So if you have a job where they have a W-2, they report the income, you know, then you pay, they match. 12.4% total tax. At first, it didn't apply to, let's say, agricultural workers or self-employed, but eventually that would happen in the 1950s. And so if you're self-employed, you got to pay the whole tax, 12.4%. It's, it's a pretty good-sized tax, but then again, you get the pension when you retire. And... For most people, it's the biggest tax they pay. It's bigger than income tax. Social Security is the biggest tax. When people, when you figure out income tax, what they tax is taxable income, and there are various ways you can deduct from your taxable income. That's what ta that's what accountants do. Our CPAs they figure out what to deduct, and it's really complex. Social Security right off the top, and one more thing, it's capped. So not all income is taxed. You get to a certain point in income, income above that point would not be taxed. Today it's about $127,000. All income up to $127,000 not taxed. But any income that somebody makes over, that's not taxed. Did I say that wrong? Yes. Let me start over. Income up to 127 taxed, over not taxed. So if you make the median salary or about $50,000 a year, all of that's taxed. But let's say you make a million dollars a year. I'm just throwing a number out there. The first $127,000 tax at 6.2, matched by your employer. Then the next 773, yeah, not taxed. Did I say 700? Wrong number, 873. What do we call a kind of tax that the more money you make, the less you pay in taxes? Yeah, regressive. This is a very regressive tax. And the thought was, well, since millionaires aren't going to get that significantly bigger of a, of a pension, let's cut the tax off. And there was a logic to it. The problem is, in the last 30 years, the inequality of wealth has grown so much that there's a lot of money now that's not being taxed. And it's hit. It's, it's a problem for Social Security collecting money. It's a big problem. They thought they would tax about 90% of all income, and now it's under 80%. That's how unequal it's become. They didn't expect that. They did not expect that. And so, a couple more things about this. There. The big thing they really push, and I'm doing the terminology they did in 1935, they really push this idea that if the main breadwinner dies, the widow and dependent children will still get benefits. That still exists today, but now it's spouse. And so there are spousal benefits and benefits for dependent children up to 18. And then if you're in college, they still get a little bit more up to 21. And the whole idea is that they're paying into it. And the expectation of this income and this will be social security for them. And they would also add disabled. And that's coming down the road, but not originally at first. It's called SSI. And... It's, it's a really important program for that. If one, if the spouse dies unexpectedly, and it, it, it does alleviate that financial burden. And there's a lot of families that lose those benefits for children that's safe. And uh, the most famous person who got that that I can think of is uh, Paul Ryan, Speaker of the House. His father died when he was young, and he got the benefits. He didn't help him get to college. And ironically, he'd like to get rid of Social Security. I just find that fascinating, but ideology. And with that, one more. It also applied for unemployment insurance. And even though now this is a separate, more separate program, but then the idea was as part of this, you pay 
a small percentage of your paycheck matched by your employers, and if you're laid off, you get at least part of your paycheck for 16 weeks to alleviate that issue of being laid off. The idea being 16 weeks will be enough for you to hopefully find a job, but economically, this is a big deal. You just imagine there's a region of the country where they go through an economic recession. If a lot of people are laid off, that will ripple down to every business in that area, or if it's a whole country, the country. Unemployment insurance will kind of alleviate that. It's called a stabilizer. Short run. You know anybody who's been laid off? This, this is a lifesaver. And lastly, there's a surplus. They, for years, have collected more than what they paid out. And this happened early on, and then they had to raise taxes again, because they planned on this. The reason why it's only 1% here is they knew as years go by, there's going to be more retirees as people live longer. And so they actually plan on raising the tax a little bit more than putting the, the surplus in a trust fund. Then they'll pay, I'll pay for retirees if they're not collecting enough taxes. And then, then perhaps raise taxes a little bit more as people live a little bit longer. As people aren't living longer, more people are living longer. And so on. And so, like in 83, when they passed it up to 6.2%, one of the biggest tax cuts in American history passed by President, signed by President Reagan in 1983. <laughs> the idea was this would dramatically double the Social Security tax. And then they would take that surplus and save it for when what generation retires? The generation that's retiring right now, born right after World War II until 1965. So you have this big bubble of people that are all at retirement age and thinking was, okay, so this will greatly expand the amount of Social Security we have to pay while this trust fund. But remember I told you about their taxing less income. So the trust fund didn't bring in as much money as they thought in 83. And what do they do with the money? The surplus, what do they do with it? They invest it in the most safe and secure investment in the world. U.S. government treasury bills. And so we have the government owing itself about four trillion dollars. So, so you would not believe how much of the U.S. federal government budget de debt, how much of the debt is actually owed to the U.S. government. They owe themselves. You would be shocked. It's about 40%. Yeah. Yeah. How do you get rid of that? Either you, well, there's lots of ways. I'm not going to go. Why are they good? Taxes. You can get rid of my taxes, or you just simply say, we're not. Check. There's actually a very, or they could mint a trillion dollar coin. Do something like that. They could do that. There's all kinds of fun stuff we could do. But that's how they did it. And here's the thing. Let's get to life expectancy. Because one of these people say, is, well, what was the life expectancy? It was about 47 for somebody alive at that time. No, wait a second, 47. And the retirement age was 65. And people are like, same people aren't even living in retirement. But now they are. In fact, this is one of the arguments that people have to get rid of Social Security. See, people are living well past 47. So if they're retiring, we have to pay for it. Now, here's the thing about life expectancy. So I did put that chart in here. That, um, here's life expectancy. So when you're born, that's life expectancy. By the way, do you catch what that is? Spanish flu. That's pretty amazing, isn't it? So, 1900, life expectancy 47. 2000, life expectancy about 78. Now it is 79, but it's going down. Life expectancy has dropped a lot in the last two years. Like as in two years in a row, like, ooh, what's going on? Probably a combination of poverty and the opioid, which is so much worse than what people realize. Because so much it happens kind of under, under where people want to look. But does that mean that people got to 47 then died? No, um, okay. there was um, you were like, right? It's infant mortality was so high. If 
wasn't that people weren't li once it got to about or wasn't that people were dying at 47 or not living that long it was that exactly so many people didn't make it to one that's the issue so that drug the whole thing down it's actually pretty amazing if you got to 60 in 1900 you didn't live you lived about this not much shorter or uh, uh, almost same uh, years as today just had to get to 60. let me phrase it you had to get to one then you actually get to 60. and that combined with not only that but how how deadly childbirth was you get rid of those two things and life expectancy the big thing was uh Combination of better health care, well, specifically learning about um, little germs, but also even public health like clean water and vaccinations. That is safe. Those two, probably more than any other two things, probably have the lack of expectancy. And then antibiotics, kind of a big deal. Royal too. What was the other one? You know, I don't know what the exact number was. I can find it, but I don't know the exact It's it's go it's pretty high for the US. And I'll let me show this real fast because this is just absolutely just remarkable. So that's the infant mortality rate from 1900 when you're born, right? To 2000. What, this was a 100 year thing. I, you know, that's why I took it. But if you made it to 60, you got to 75. It's about 80 here. It's not a lot different. You just had to get to that age. So people lived almost as long. It was just getting there. In fact, in the U.S. today, in the bottom half of the income, their income or the you know, get past one, the bottom half of the income aren't living much different than they did 40 years ago. Probably social security more than anything else. So let's talk about a couple things today about it because it's such a big program and it's so important to so many people. If you don't believe me, ask somebody near retirement or retired. They'll tell you. Is it important? Yeah. Yes, very important. Especially since I, I know a lot of people who I have some friends who are teachers in California, for example, and they don't get Social Security. The state government, state employees opted out of that. They, so they wouldn't have to pay the tax. It's been a terrible mistake. My brother is a professor at Ohio State. And they don't have it there either. So, well, they thought they would save that money, but what happens is, yeah. yeah. And so my brother's like, you know, he's kind of stuck, you know. So their pension is a little bit higher than mine, but I get Social Security, so it's more than makes up for it. Here's the first thing: How much of the debt does Social Security contribute to? A lot. A lot. By law, Social Security cannot go into debt. It can't go into debt. It cannot contribute to the federal debt. If they don't have enough money in their trust funds or tax revenues, they have to cut that. But they can't go into debt. By law, they can't. Next, is it going broke? No. It can't. Because unless people quit working. Because everybody pays payroll tax. If the whole tax system breaks down and, and no one, I don't, the least of our worries of Social Security will be there. Then it will literally be <laughs> Mad Max. Next. And solvency means we'll pay its total amount due if, if the economy remains the way it is now, okay. They say by the middle, somewhere between 2030 and 2040, it will begin to run out of money and they'll have to drop benefits down about dropping down about 20 percent still pretty significant average benefits about 1600 a month remember it's just supposed to be about the poverty line so 20 percent is a lot of money down about 14 yeah solvency means able to make able to make your payments and they won't be able to make their total payments so they just have to cut but <coughs> this means if we have really good economy They'll collect so much money in taxes that you have nothing to worry about. Or if they get rid of the cap, Social Security will never have a financial problem for as long as 
my life and your life. If they get rid of the cow. Get rid of the cow and tax all of them. Do it. Well, you know, for years, both political parties talked about cutting it. The Republicans, their hierarchy still would like to get rid of it. At least cut it. Yeah. If President Trump or, or the majority in the Senate, majority of the House have the way they get rid of it completely. Or at least cut it. But Democrats have finally figured out uh, politically that, that people really like it. No. <laughs> no, really. They really like it. So they're actually talking about more and more even expanding. So politically, that you know, we can argue whether or not it's good or bad, but that's kind of the politics of it. No, no, this is a Republican program. So Repub I mean, no, sorry, not I'm sorry, Democratic program. The Republicans have never really liked this. Okay, but but Democrats are pretty, you know what? President Clinton and President Obama economically were pretty conservative. Economically. And they are now, but Democrats have moved more to liberal economically. Which I'll tell you about that on the next Yeah. So you don't know what you're talking about. So now it's like representatives of the Senate and the House of the President that they, they get Social Security? Sure. They get Social Security and they get a pension from working. Yeah. So then why do they want to cut? Well, part of it is it goes against trigger non economics. Goes against social Darwinism, and they might have enough money they don't need it. And so, one more thing, I was looking at the life expectancy charts, and I found this, and this one just fascinated me, so I thought I'd show you. Here, the red line is life expectancy. Down below is the cost per capita per person for healthcare, and the U.S. is well over nine thousand dollars per person per year. These are all the other industrialized countries, and this is their. Life expectancy, 84, and so on. And this is their health care. And that really, I knew it was this way, but wow. Huh? Yeah. So, you know, Japan or you know, Spain is 83 and pays less than a third per person for health care. I kind of that kind of blew me away. I knew it was a lot, but when you see it like that, and since I saw that chart, I thought, oh, I put that up for it. But heck, the United States has lower life expectancy than a lot of countries that are not even industrialized, like close to Why? And soon the U.S. is going to be lower than Mexico. Yeah. Oh, no, I just really asked, why is that? Why is it like that? We've got a lot of poverty, and we don't do anything. We don't have any, any programs for poverty. And for the poverty, we have and we have really expensive health care. People make a lot of money off of it, and uh, the opioid crisis is here really helps too. That's but that's actually before that opioid crisis begins. Yeah, that that blew me away when Mexico will soon have a higher life expectancy because Mexico is a lot poorer country than the United States. And let's just jump right to this. So. Last or second last of the big second deal is a big deal. The Wagner Act. And the Wagner Act would be for labor unions. And if workers now remember one thing about labor unions, what does that do to wages? Yeah. Wait, labor unions get higher wages. Now there might be some you gotta pay some dues and a few other things, but they get higher wages. And if the workers vote, and the law says literally one. If, if they get one over 50% or greater, they recognize the union. And that's how the law reads. And I know that's the majority. But the law literally reads one over 50%. I just always fascinates me why they do that, so I put that on there. And the company must recognize the union, and then the union can collectively bargain. And remember economy to scale. One worker, it's really hard to negotiate higher wages. But if they all come together, then they negotiate. We just saw that in West Virginia, where all the teachers went on strike. And not that they got a huge wage, but they got combined health benefits and a 5% wage if they want. And if companies, and it's illegal for companies to try to intimidate workers or fire them, and if that does happen, they can take their case to the National Labor Relations Board. And they could rule whether or not the company tried to intimidate them or fire them or trying to start a union. Now, 
The thing about this is, it's regulatory. Appointed, appointed by the president. If the president is relatively pro labor, you know, might put people in there that'd be pretty open to helping labor unions form. If they're anti labor unions, they don't want the higher wages, they'll put people that might not be so open to that. Yes? What is Trump? What is Trump? It's very anti labor. Extreme, exceeding. One of the most in history. One of the most in history. I mean, since. One of the most in modern history. And there's been some pretty anti labor presidents. Obama was middle of the road because he was middle of the road not about everything. Your President Bush was anti labor. Clinton, middle of the road. You know, Bush, Reagan, anti. Clinton, or Carter, pretty pro. Go back. This, Roosevelt realized that if he gets the union, they get higher wages and give him credit, he's got their vote. Labor union members voted overwhelmingly Democratic because of this up until the 1970s. Overwhelmingly, we'll get to the 70s and how things change. Because they represent, the Democratic Party represented the party that brought them a better life. Now, I know it might be more complex than that, but they were very effective at pushing that argument. Any of you know anything about politics in the 1970s? Boy, did the Democrats blow that. So, the next big option. We're going to come back to the, on, on Wednesday, just one more thing about the, because we got to talk about the growth up unions here. The Wealth Tax Act. And the Wealth Tax Act would be progressive income tax and the state, and also an estate tax, a tax on very large estates. Part of the reason for this dramatic increase was FDR was mad. He's still mad about the uh, uh, Wall Street food. He's still mad. He, and he figures, what's the best way to get those people? Take their money. And so he wanted this tax rate. And these are marginal tax rates. So here's, remember the Mellon tax cuts of the 20s? So tax rate about 27% for the very highest. For the New Deal, eventually up to 79 during World War II, 94. In the 50s, 91. It wasn't JFK, actually, it was passing LBJ, but whatever. And here, where we get more conservative economics, eventually go down to 28. Today, it's about 35, so it's a little bit lower. Right now, right at this moment. A lot lower tax rates now. It's been one of worlds. And the short marginal tax rates are here. Are, here's a chart. I know you want to see all the check tax rates. This is just not 2013 on. So this will all be on the test. So have this all memorized. <laughs> so let's get to the Wealth Tax Act. Here we go. And these are all the rates. The vast majority of people were here, almost everybody, and they paid 4%. For four thousand dollars, so if you made between zero and four thousand dollars, you paid four percent. If you made five thousand dollars a year, right? For the first four thousand dollars, you paid four percent. For the next one thousand dollars, you paid eight percent, and so on. So you go. Everybody paid the same tax for the same dollar. Everybody, regardless, if you made. $10 million a year or $1,000 a year. For the first $4,000 of that, you pay 4%. All the way up to if you made over $5 million a year, all income over $5 million was taxed at 79%. So if you made that $10 million a year, the $5 million above that, you'd be taxed at 79%. And then for the next two million at seventy-eight, so on all the way up. Oh. Now, if you look at that thing, the math's hard, the math is not hard. There's a formula you plug it in, it's really easy. When I first started doing my own taxes, you had a book and you just came up with your taxable income, so you figure out your deductions and everything. Found a number, <coughs> boom, found the book, there's your chart. For state taxes, you have a formula you just plug it in. Now, today, most people do it on the computer, so they just automatically come up with it. That's easy. The hard part is figuring out your tax flow income. And if you take the new tax law, which is supposed to be easier, but it turned out to be actually more complex, but the IRS puts out paperback books with all the tax laws, and if you would stack those books next to me, they would be taller than me. 
And it's all filled with ways to deduct from your taxes. That only apply to the to the top. Almost all of them apply to the top. They won't apply to me. And so that's how the taxes work. And they're all marginal. Now, what I just told you about marginal income tax, most Americans do not know. They do not know this. They complain about taxes, but they don't know how the taxes work. Now, I have some sympathy because people are busy, it's hard work, but still, I am going to present this to you in a very easy to follow way. Are you happy? No, yes. Yeah. It's not good. By the way, you want to see World War II? Yeah. World War II taxes? Here we go. $94. Let's go to the best economic time in our history. Let's go find 1962. That sounds like a good year? Yeah. Who remembers those heady days of 62? Yes. 91. Oh, very. I mean, it goes to 36.5. For the highest. And only about four rates. Five rates, I'm sorry. Five rates. Wait, but, so, wait, so if you're married and you're filed separately, it's 91% for 200,000? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because it would be both your incomes combined. Yeah. Not yeah, married, filed jointly. Yes, yeah. yeah. It's a little bit different today, the way they figure out separately or head a household. It, it's kind of, it's a, it's a mess. It's a but, let's get to this. Let's say, let's do the math easy. We'll make sure we understand marginal income tax. If you're not sure, here is my tax code for parts of land deal. And what are you paid in? Partridges, of course, yes. <laughs> not the bird, but you can, but we're on the partridge based system. So you can go to any bank and get partridges for it. Zero to 10,000, your tax is 0%. No tax for that. Okay, everyone get that? 10,000 to 20,000, your tax is 10%. So this is my country. You're all, you're all part of it. 20,000 and above, your tax is 20%. That's my free tax rate. Easy, right? So let's say you make 5,000 partridges a year. How much do you tax? Zero. Zero. Let's say you are you make fifteen thousand partridges. How much tax do you pay? Zero. Of what? Of five thousand. Of five thousand. For the first ten thousand dollars of that, you pay no taxes. For the next five thousand, you pay ten percent, which is how much? Five hundred dollars. So let's say you make a hundred thousand partridges a year. How much you pay? Ten percent of ten thousand. For the first ten thousand, how much you pay? For the next ten thousand, how much you pay? Ten percent, which is how much? One thousand. And then how much left do you have tax? Eighty thousand at twenty percent. How much tax is that? 80,000, 20%. Your total tax, 17,000. Yeah. Well, so nobody pays the total 20%. It's not like, it's not, you're above it. You're above twenty thousand dollars. You pay twenty percent. No, it's marginal. Everybody pays the same tax for the same dollar. So everybody, regardless of your income, that first ten thousand dollars is not taxed. Everybody. So if you made a million partridges a year, which I don't know if I'm going to allow that. But if you do, you still the first ten thousand. And the reason they do marginal is this. Let's say this was like twenty percent for all for for the entire thing, and they made over twenty thousand. Let's say you made nineteen thousand dollars a year, and you got a raise. You like, God, I got a two thousand dollar raise. Ooh, I'll be paying a lot more in taxes, won't I? Won't that be a disincentive? Mm -hmm. But if it's marginal, there's no disincentive. You're only paying twenty percent of your work. Yeah, for over that amount. Now, why do they have a tax code like this? And the big reason is this: it does a lot of things economically. A lot of things. Now, this is liberal economic idea, even though it did happen. So, it does boost wages. 
It also boosts investment. Hey, would you pay yourself a million dollars a year and have it all taxed away? <coughs> Wouldn't that be an incentive to put more money in your business, to invest? And if this then therefore limits the amount of extra money with people on top, it will stymie bubbles. Do you know what I mean by stymie? I don't know why I use the word stymie. Just, I just want to use stymie. Make it more difficult to have a, a speculative bubble. Because you won't have as much extra income to speculate with. It'll be taxed away. Now, I know. If you're on the top and have that taxed away, you might be saying, wait a second. That's wrong. But remember, economic policy is not for them. Technically, it's for everybody. Or maybe it is for them. I don't know. It depends. Depends who we are. But that's the idea here. And you saw this what happened. With the tax rates that high, wages for almost everybody went up. In fact, wages for everybody went up. The biggest wage increase in history was in the 50s and 60s when the tax rate was at 91%, the highest tax rate. In the 1980s, when they had a dramatic cut by 86 down to 28%, within a year, the, the, the first bubblings of a speculative bubble, the first bubblings. So, we're not going to go through that whole thing here. Let's get to the last of the biggie. This is the biggest of all the Second New Deal programs, the WPA. This huge public works program. The other programs were not big enough. There's still the problem of unemployment. This will provide jobs to millions of people. You see how these black, those are counties. In 1936 alone, each of those counties had at least one brand new school built. Just school built by the WPA. Luke, see those black counties down there? No. That's just 1936 alone. It's going to build roads, bridges, canals. Yeah. The school was built in it. You know, that I don't know, and I actually tried to find. It's a school in Lewis and Clark County, and I don't know. There are a couple schools in this. Is it central? Do the central? Capital. I think it might actually be Jefferson, but I'm not sure. I think Central's older than that. Central. Well, Central's older than that. And so is Hawthorne. Okay, so I have a little bit left to finish tomorrow on this. Actually, we'll do it. We'll do it on Wednesday, right? Tomorrow. No. So, hey, good luck on the test tomorrow. Do your best. Don't break your ankle and tear all the ligaments in your ankle the night before you take the ACT test. I'm just throwing that out there. Just some friendly advice. Yes. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Well, I'm going to talk to him. I'll tell you. Yeah. What would it you? I don't even know. Oh, he so might land on the end. So be careful. Your brother, I'm going to say out of state. Yeah. That's really cool. My mom went to Ohio State. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. My brother is an economics professor. So would it tomorrow? Yeah. After the dentist? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for the warning. <laughs> All right, it's seven for seven for the last week. Okay. Oh, uh, most of it are. People in the United States. So either banks in the US. So do you buy a bond? Yeah, I can 
So if you did not do, what did you buy? I got like this vintage Van Halen shirt. Yes. <laughs> I approve right yeah. now. Did I tell you about the Van Halen concert I saw? No. No. 1980. I'm old, remember? At the Metro. Yeah. 1986. Yeah. Sammy Hagar had been joined in. I didn't really like Sammy Hagar. <laughs> He's being the worst. Oh, yeah. No, he's. He could be worse. That's the bad part. Yeah, and I think that's a thousand people. That was all about. What's the best of all time? The best of all time. Best thing I've ever seen. Not even. Not even. Uh, no. It was. It was it was amazing. And then the, the Paul McCartney ones were the best. <laughs> Dan Halen, I didn't particularly like. I didn't care if you liked it. Just like, and I didn't think I think we paid like fifteen bucks. I know there's been a lot of inflation, but still. Oh uh, yeah. my <laughs> Yeah, Green Day, I think it was like a uh, All the party ones were Oh, Okay, so somebody skipped when they were supposed to present. Did you throw something at me? No, I just went to get Green Day. Oh, and the other thing is this, if you did not dress up, you owe me this week. Somebody at tomorrow, what are you bringing us? Pizza. I'm going to just bring it and I do have it. <laughs> and then I'll have the pizza and I'll, I'll take a bite out of each slice and then I'll let you guys have the rest. It's going to be 20 style pizza, so it's going to be, what did we say? Oh, it's sugar babies. Yep. And Starburst. And Starburst. Sure, maybe Starburst. <laughs> That's what you see in the old country. Yes. And, and so if you did not, and then what do you, and you're coming. <laughs> 1920 style yellow. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> it has to be something for the 20s. 
spam. All right, so Ani, you want to go first? Famous spam pudding. Let me rephrase that. You went first. And then we got to talk a little bit about Manson. And the thing about Manson is, so I'm decided what we're going to do. I'm going to check for timing out. But we are going to watch a fantastic movie on Manson. But there's, I'm trying to decide if we have time to show one other thing. No, 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 not the way. The thing about Manson is to really understand what goes on. Oh, it's still recording. <laughs> it's kind of a big deal to show that summer of 67, so people know why 